in an older industrial section of Montreal, you can find Alexandru Duru working away in his shop amongst the clutter and the dirty dishes and the list of things he's working on. This is what you do when you doodle? Yeah. Some discussions, a part of a remaining part of a to-do list and uh, some discussion on pulse width modulation yeah. and uh, engine motor controls. There's a machine carving 3D engine designs in the corner. Computers and parts stacked up everywhere. So parts are coming from all over the world? Pretty much, yeah. He has a company now, Omni Hoverboards Inc. Some fellows working with him, investors on the phone, attention from around the world. And all because of this. There's the beast over there. Yeah, here it is. This is what came out of his brain. It may not be much to look at, but this machine, this hoverboard, can make a human fly. So what, did you have a dream, I'm going to fly? Well, yeah, something like that. I, I saw how technology was evolving and I was thinking, ah, this is actually possible. You can make something like that today and I uh, said, why not? As a boy, after his family emigrated from Romania, he grew up in Montreal, watching his father Dan, the electrical engineer. And soon, Alexandru was tinkering himself. As a young software engineer, he designed this 3D imaging technology for use in a performance of the Metropolitan Opera House in New York. But for the last several years, this has been the obsession. Oh yeah, that's light. It's a combination of carbon and high-tech electronics. Look, I need to bore your hoverboard. And it has conjured up comparisons with Michael J. Fox's ride in Back to the Future or the Goblin in Spider-Man. But it isn't quite like that. From the first board with the propellers on top to control systems okay. that got a little too hot. This is flame? Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Ooh, hot foot. So the control system, you control it with your feet, with your hands. His design is a little different. <laughs> but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a pair of pliers, right? Yeah. Wow. And that's all you need? That's all you need. A pair of pliers for the accelerator. Snowboarding straps to anchor his feet. Those tighten up nicely, eh? <laughs> yeah, 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 they yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, he would want that. And batteries, lots of lithium polymer batteries to power the electric motors, eight of them generating around 40 horsepower. Well, how long? One minute and a half. One and a half minutes. Yes. And then... But that was all it took. One and a half minutes to shatter the old world record earlier this summer flying for almost 300 meters, five times farther than the previous record. A flight watched by over six and a half million people. When you uh, set the record, how did that feel? That was, uh, that was, that was an amazing day. It was, uh, it felt like all these uh, were, uh, these, these years of work actually uh, added up to something that's worth it. And I'm really happy that we got global coverage. Yeah. And you've heard from around the world. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not slowing down. Well, it looks pretty cool. Modifications continue as he designs his highly secretive next generation. And today, near Sutton, Quebec, in the middle of cottage country, where his buddies are getting ready to throw a bit of a party, Just help me turn. he's doing yet another test flight. Mom and Dad, Dan and Nina are here. Every flight is an event. Is he super smart or just a little bit crazy? I think it's bad. about. <laughs> <laughs> and what does Mom think? Oh, me, I uh, suffer a lot because um, uh, I was worried every day, every day. Yeah. You know? 
There's a connection that is not made properly here. But a few pre-flight tests turn up a problem. There's a few controls that don't respond properly and we don't want to take chances and give you footage with uh, people that are losing like fingers and things like that. No, that Even was... though that would be really interesting footage, we totally agree. I don't want that, it would spoil my story. <laughs> Several hours of troubleshooting and soldering. Okay. And it's thumbs up. Now a crowd is gathered. Here we go. Here we go. It's a clean lift from the shore, but it turns out flying over water was a good idea. I don't know. Half of the machine didn't work. Dad to the rescue and back to the drawing board. Not that he's ready to give up, far from it. Remember, this is just a prototype. While they straighten out a loose connection, Alexandru entertains the crowd. Did you always want to fly? Oh, yeah, it's been some time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, is it like satisfying? Oh, it is, it totally. Actually, I just want to try it again right Do now. It. Yeah. <laughs> Mom is not sure another flight is a good idea. Are you getting nervous? Yeah, just a little. This is it. But this time, it's pure magic. The magic of flight that has captured our imagination since Orville and Wilbur Wright. Now unleashed in its simplest form by the imagination and intelligence of this young Canadian inventor. But if he thinks I'm getting on that thing, he really is nuts. Well, it's your turn now, huh? I don't know, that's probably got a weight restriction in it. It does, it does. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll leave that to guys like you. Oh. <laughs> Red Sharon, CBC News, safe on the ground near Sutton, Quebec.